Welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Today's episode is going to be a little different because we're going back in time to the 1980s and 90s when Friday nights ruled the world. It's Friday night and the mood is right. We're going to have some fun, show you how it's done, TGIF. TGIF aired on the ABC television network on Friday nights between 1989 and 2000, with attempted relaunches from 2003 to 2005, and again from 2018 to 2019. It was a two-hour-long programming block that in its original run broadcast family-friendly sitcoms during prime time. For those of you who grew up streaming without an understanding of terms like this, prime time was a period of television programming that took place between 7 and 10 p.m. in the United States. For the most part, primetime programming was directed towards adults with more mature television shows. ABC, however, which was owned by Walt Disney, decided to go another way and make primetime for the whole family. This wasn't just for Friday nights either. Tuesdays were also centered around family-friendly shows, with a few of them actually being right on the edge of family-friendly and mature, like Roseanne. ABC, which stands for American Broadcasting Company, got its start in 1953 and almost immediately began broadcasting family-friendly content such as The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, Leave it to Beaver, The Donna Reed Show, The Flintstones, The Brady Bunch, and The Partridge Family through the 1970s. TGIF officially launched on September 22, 1989 as the brainchild of Jim Janicek, with the letters standing for Thank God It's Friday. Those starring in TGIF sitcoms, however, chose a different meaning. Thank goodness it's Friday with the wording then being changed across the board and television bumpers promoting the programming block. Prior to developing TGIF for ABC, writer and producer Jim Janicek, who promoted ABC's Tuesday and Friday night comedy lineups, was reminded of the times when his family would gather around the television to watch The Wonderful World of Disney, which aired between ABC, NBC, CBS, and the Disney Channel between 1954 and today. These memories inspired him to develop a comedy block that was specifically for the entire family. Support for his creation quickly gained steam as he approached studios and performers of ABC-produced shows. Janicek received support from ABC Network president Bob Iger. Iger had long been a feature of ABC and the Walt Disney Company, having joined ABC in 1974, performing menial labor on television sets and working his way up to his current position as CEO of the Walt Disney Company. In its first year, TGIF was composed of the shows Perfect Strangers, Full House, and Mr. Belvedere, with Growing Pains and Just the Ten of Us being added the following year. From the very beginning, TGIF utilized its stars as hosts of the programming block, beginning with Mark Lynn Baker and Bronson Pinchot as Larry Appleton and Balky Bartokamas, where the actors in character would introduce each show as well as commercial breaks. This continued into the 90s when other series stars began alternating hosting duties, such as the cast of Family Matters, Full House, Step by Step, and Boy Meets World. It was during this time the name was changed from Thank God It's Friday to Thank Goodness It's Funny and introduced by the cast of Full House. It was during the 1989 season that Perfect Strangers, the show that arguably started TGIF, spawned a spinoff series that aired right before it during the programming block. Family Matters was originally pitched as a realistic sitcom revolving around the Perfect Strangers characters of Harriet and Carl Winslow and their family. Actress Jo Marie Payton had joined the cast of Perfect Strangers in a supporting role as elevator operator Harriet Winslow, working in the same newspaper office as Larry and Balky as part of the main cast from 1987 until 1989. In this show, the newspaper's owners decided to make the elevator self-service, which put Harriet out of a job. This allowed for her character to transfer over to her own show, Family Matters, in a kind of soft reboot. <laughs> Okay. What are you doing? I, I am waiting for Harriet. I, I want to use the elevator. Well, Harriet doesn't run the elevator anymore. She don't? No. Well, well wh wh whoever they got to replace her is late. Bucky, the elevator runs by itself. It does? Yes. Well, what was Harriet doing in there that whole time? No, Harriet used to run the elevator, but now she's got her own show. It's called Family Matters. Watch this. That's your mama. Harry, wait a minute. What do I do now? 
You could open the door. What are my other options? You don't have any. <laughs> open the door. Hi, Mama. <laughs> this is my husband, Carl. Say hello, Carl. Hello. And this is Carl's mother, Mother Winslow. Say hello. Well, how do you do? It's a real pleasure to meet you. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about my world travel. Mother, see, uh -huh. we don't have enough time. We need to talk about the show. These are our children, Eddie, Laura, and Judy. Hi. Hi. Yo. And this is Harriet's sister, Rachel, and her son, Richie. Say hi, Richie. Say hi. He can say hi. <laughs> you keep working with him, Rachel, while we watch this. Are we ever gonna eat? My digestion's about to shut down. Come on, Richie. Come on, say hi. Say hi. He was great in rehearsal. <laughs> so come join our family on Friday nights. That's all we need, more people in the house. We look forward to being with you on Family Matters. Eddie, get your feet off that baby's blanket. Yes, Mama. Harriet's family was really nice. Will, will I ever get to see them again? Every Friday night, right before Perfect Strangers. Well, well, Cotton, I want to tell the whole building about family matters. Too bad I can't use the elevator. You can use the elevator. It still works the same way. Thanks, Cotton. <clears throat> Forward, please. <laughs> During their time on Perfect Strangers, Harriet and Carl resided in the same apartment building as Larry and Balky, having two children at the time. But when they gained their own show, Family Matters, Harriet and Carl became homeowners, having lived in their house since Eddie was very young, and had three children, Eddie, Laura, and Judy. Some elements from their time on Perfect Strangers had transitioned over, though, such as Carl being a police officer, a role that Reginald Vell Johnson portrayed on several occasions, beginning in 1984 with Ghostbusters, where he portrayed the corrections officer that released the team to go see the mayor. Vell Johnson continued portraying police officers in movies like Plain Clothes, Die Hard, Turner and Hooch, Die Hard 2, and TV shows like One of Her Own, Chuck, Family Guy, and the Boy Meets Girl spinoff, Girl Meets World. I like to think these are all the same character. You know, after the events of the New York City cross rip, New York City corrections officer decided he would much rather take on a less dangerous job and became a New York City limo driver, where he drove for Mick Dundee. After saving Mick from some muggers, he decided to move out to L.A., where he became a full-fledged police officer. It was here that he made sergeant and Harriet became pregnant with Eddie at which time he was involved in a terrorist attack at Nakatomi Plaza, and eventually moved his family to Chicago, where he was bumped down to patrolman before becoming sergeant again. I know, I know. There's some holes in that, but hey, it's a fun to imagine that Ghostbusters, Crocodile Dundee, Die Hard, and Family Matters all take place in the same universe, isn't it? Anyway, the connection between Perfect Strangers and Family Matters wasn't the only one on TGIF. In fact, at one point, Family Matters, Step by Step, Full House, and Boy Meets World were all interconnected as being part of a shared universe, as Steve Urkel, portrayed by Jaleel White, appeared in at least one episode of all four shows. Well, in Boy Meets World, he was only mentioned as Corey's pen pal. During the height of TGIF's popularity in the 90s, each series had at least one or two episodes that took place at either Disneyland or Disney World in order to promote ABC's parent company's theme parks. These episodes were generally some of the most memorable and weren't only confined to TGIF shows, but the majority of ABC's sitcoms. During Roseanne's Disney World episode, we actually witnessed Darlene show innocent affection for the first time. During Boy Meets World's Disney World episode, we witnessed Corey and Sean follow Topanga to the theme park, where the couple eventually got back together. In the Family Matters two-parter, we witnessed Stefan Urkel propose to Laura. This was done to promote the idea that Disney World was the most magical place in the world. TGIF broadcast its final sitcom block of its original run on May 5th, 2000, which saw longtime series Boy Meets World end its run with an hour-long final episode. We wanted to know if you had anything else left to teach us. Believe in yourselves. Dream. Try. Too good. Well, <clears throat> I guess there's just one thing left then. Tell us you love us. Now look. If there's one thing I've taught you is that there is a line between teacher and student that must never be crossed. Tell us you love us. 
I regard all my students equally. Uh, come on, Feeney. You haven't even talked to another student for seven years. I mean, you might... <laughs> Tell us you love us. I surely will not. Okay for you, then. I will never forget you. You were more of a father to me than my own dad. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. But I do know that I'm gonna be a good person who cares about people. And I blame you for that. <laughs> give up on me. Never once. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna forget you. You're the best person I know. You coming with us, Mr. Feeney? <laughs> you gonna sneak up on us in Central Park or something? <laughs> no, I shall remain here. No, you'll always be with us. As long as we live, okay? you all. Class dismissed. This was also the same night that ABC aired its final two episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which then went on to air on the WB network. During the final year of its run, TGIF dropped its hosting segments and the name TGIF itself was only used for promos and bumpers. During the following television season, ABC renamed the programming block as Working Comedy and moved away from the family-friendly format that made it such a success in the 80s and 90s. Over the years, ABC has attempted to relaunch the TGIF block with little to no success due to it steering away from family comedies and into more mature comedies. Over the years, a number of shows have become popular as a result of being part of TGIF. Shows like Growing Pains, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, Boy Meets World, Step by Step, Full House, Dinosaurs, Sister Sister, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Mr. Belvedere. On a personal note, a few years ago I introduced my children to TGIF by creating a family night on Fridays where we'd order pizza and sat around the TV together without anyone being allowed to use their phones or computers and watched four shows in our own personal streaming TGIF lineup. This quickly became a weekly tradition that we continue today. The shows that began our TGIF nights were Family Matters on HBO Max, Sister Sister on Hulu, Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Hulu, and Boy Meets World on Disney+. While it isn't quite the same as having the TGIF intro and bumpers included, it comes pretty close to remaking those nights from my own childhood where my family gathered around the TV and watched TGIF. We are now in the final seasons of Sister, Sister, and Sabrina, and my kids have already expressed interest in replacing them with Full House and The Cosby Show. I know, The Cosby Show wasn't on TGIF, nor was it an ABC sitcom. Plus, let's not forget the whole thing with Bill Cosby. But we decided that for TGIF, we wouldn't just stick to ABC shows. That we would include any sitcom that was family-friendly. And in spite of Bill Cosby's personal issues and legal matters, the Cosby Show was a fantastic family-friendly sitcom. We as a society need to relearn how to separate the art from the artist. It's okay to find enjoyment in someone's art, even if we don't like the artists themselves. In recent years, stars from TGIF series have begun podcasts where they rewatch their shows and give behind-the-scenes insights into them. 
Melissa Joan Hart has a podcast entitled What Women Binge that premiered in January of 2022 with co-host Amanda Lee, where they talk about everything that interests them, including 90s sitcoms. Three of the stars of Boy Meets World, Ryder Strong, Danielle Fischel, and Will Friedle, host the podcast Pod Meets World, where each week they rewatch one episode from Boy Meets World and interview fellow 90s actors, producers, costumers, etc. Pod Meets World has become a favorite of mine. In a recent episode, the cast spoke about a return to family-friendly comedies and how they have been lacking in recent years, with the majority of sitcoms being either child-centered or adult-centered, but not in between. On a related note, other 90s sitcom stars have also continued the trend of producing podcasts based around their shows, such as the Lawrence Brothers, who produced the Brotherly Love podcast, and Will Friedle co-hosts a number of other podcasts, which include I Hear Voices, alongside Kim Possible co-star Christy Carlson Romano. Stars from the 90s also gathered together in what is becoming a yearly convention called 90s Con, which is essentially a Comic-Con for all things 90s. This year's 90s Con will be held in Tampa, Florida, and Hartford, Connecticut. If you'd like to join the TGIF discussion, and who knows, maybe convince ABC to bring back the TGIF family-friendly programming block, join our Facebook group, Bring Back TGIF Family-Friendly Fridays on ABC. If you'd like more history and origins videos about all things 90s, let me know in the comments below. So what was your favorite TGIF sitcom? Personally, I like Family Matters. Boy Meets World was a close second for me, but Family Matters was where it was at. Many of the episodes weren't afraid to deal with hard-hitting topics such as racism, gang violence, drugs, uh, the list goes on and on. The same goes for Boy Meets World. They did it in a way that kids could understand, that wasn't preachy, could be considered realistic, that would help parents to talk to their kids about these topics. So overall, Family Matters and Boy Meets World would have to be the top two sitcoms that TGIF produced. They they were really innovative for their day. We'll see you next week. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out one of these two playlists for more videos just like the one you just watched. I've been Shannon. This has been Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.